Today, we're going to be talking about something that we all need to get better at. That is budgeting. So I know it might sound like, oh my gosh, not again, or stressful, or all of that. But see, hang on. If, if you're tired of wondering, where did all the money go to at the end of the month? Or what did I even buy? What is it? What, I mean, where is all my money? Then you will love this video because see, enough of allowing money to mesmerize us and make us feel like we don't know what we are doing. That frustration of not knowing where your money is going to, we're going to kill it. Yes. But see, the truth is, it doesn't have to be that way. So what if I told you that with just a little adjustment here and there, you'll be able to track exactly where your money is going to and stop it from disappearing into thin air. See, budgeting will help you feel like, oh my gosh, you just, I just discovered money that has been in plain sight. This money has always been here, but I just didn't know how to get it to be where I want it to be. That's how you're going to feel at the end of this video, okay? So that's why you should watch to the very end. So that's why you should like this video right now, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so that all the people who are thinking about financial freedom, how to save up money for the next project can also see this video. And then the sweet thing about this system I'm going to share with you is that whether you are earning plenty money or you're earning just a little, this will still work for you. You don't have to be a financial expert to like know how to get around it, no. And you'll be able to budget in a way that you can live life the way you want it. See, one of the things you're going to say at the end of this way is, ah, if I knew I would have been budgeting like they, 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 for a long time, that's how you're going to feel after this video. So let's start with this whole definition. Like, what is even budget? Budget is simply a plan for your money. You telling your money, this is where I want it to go. This is where I want it to go. This is where I want it to stay. You get? So it's you telling your money where you want it to go. Not you wondering, where has it gone? <laughs> you get that? And also, see, just like you can't go to the market without having a list of things you want to buy. That's the same way you shouldn't spend a dime out of your money without telling it, this is what this is for. This is what this is for. That's just how it is. A plan, a list of where your money should go. Now, let's break it down. There is this common discussion about, oh, budgeting is only when you have a lot of money and all of that, rather, rather. No, but see, it is not the rich people or somebody who has arrived that budgets only. Even with your small income, yes, you can budget. And see, don't even tell me about that whole, um, I'm not earning enough to even live. How should I budget and all of that? If you don't budget, you are not going to get past that income stream because you don't even know how to manage it. It is even when you earn less that you should budget more. Trust me, you're going to find out. This is the system. Let me tell you about the 50, 30, 20 formula. Now, 50 goes to your needs, paying off things like rent, school fees, you know, all those important things. And 30% of your income goes to wants, things like hobbies, eating out, buy yourself something new treat yourself because you're the one earning the money so you treat yourself things that will make you feel good replacing all the things you need and all of that taking care of other people as well now 20 is your savings or the money you use to pay off debt very simple formula 50 30 20 now see if you look at it it's not so stringent it's not telling you to save like 50 percent like some people will say save 20 percent but let me tell you something in your 50%, when you're saving your 50% for your needs, if having an emergency fund, which I'm going to talk about before the end of this video, if having an emergency fund, fund that no matter if, if life throws you a curveball, you can use it to handle it. If it's a need, then you should budget for emergency fund in your needs. Or better still, if it's something you want to do, you've been planning that I need to have an emergency fund saved up and I want my income to be able to accommodate it, then make it part of your 30% who wants. Have an emergency fund either way. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, in your savings as well, savings, your savings or your money for debt paying is different from the emergency funding. So have that at the back of your mind as we continue. Okay. So that way, if you're earning like a hundred thousand or a hundred dollars, I know they are not equivalent, so I'll just take it as an example. So you're earning a hundred dollars or you're earning a hundred thousand naira. Fifty thousand naira goes for all the things you need to do, needs, rent, groceries. All of those replacement and stuff. 30% go to things you need to do. Maybe your subscription for certain online um, subscription that you, you need. Um, taking yourself out, eating out, your sports facility, gym. You know, some of those things, right? Now, your 
20,000 naira goes to savings, right? That is if you're not indebted. If you're indebted, don't use the other amount of money to pay it. Use the 20% to try to accommodate your debt. That way, you don't also enter debt that you cannot pay off. With this style, you're not actually depriving yourself of much or anything at all if you look at it properly. And that way, you'll be motivated to do this all the time. Now, this is where most of us struggle. Tracking our spending. You know how that, you know, you tap tap your bank app, you buy a recharge card, you pay for maybe uh, for pay TV, you transfer in airtime to your mom or to your sibling. And at the end of the week, you're wondering, where did all the money that was in this account go to? Now, this is where you should focus on. Make sure that as you're tapping away at your bank app, you're labeling the amount, the, the what you're using your money for. You know that narration button? Please don't leave it blank. Label it. That way you can go at the end of the month and look at everything you have spent because they will also always send you your bank statement, you know, on your phone or your email. You can look at it and track how much you spent on data, how much you spent maybe paying rent or paying or salaries or pay whatever it is. But this is for personal finance. Oh, okay. So I don't know if salary will fit into your needs. Anyhow, it is, you'll be able to tell. Or you're not really a digital person. Fine. Use pen and paper to take note of all your spending. See, don't take this for granted, right? If you can take receipts when you buy from the market so that you can come back and record them perfectly, the old school pen and paper still works. That is where you have to discipline yourself not to ignore. Track what you're spending. Track what you're spending. See, it's okay to know this principle, to say, okay, 50% needs, 30% want, 20% savings or debts. But then you come back and say, okay, so what should I push on to it? Oh, this is too small. This can't even cover this. And then you start rationalizing. Please don't rationalize. And after doing that, then take time to look at how much you're spending and where they're going to. See, this exercise will totally blow your mind. It blew my own mind. And I'm like, so my money is going for things. Anyway, internet is not, let me not say there is inconsequential, but it made me know that internet is such a big deal. Like I can't stay two hours straight. If I'm not in a meeting or in a in involved in an activity away from my phone, I'll be comfortable. Well, what will I even be doing apart from cooking and maybe a school run or whatever that will make me not use the internet on my phone? You get what I mean? Like, so it made me to understand. So yours might be food. You might just discover that you need to do better in that department. But let's take you to the next aspect of this video. In tracking your expenses, you've gotten that. Now, how do you make sure that this amount of money, 50% goes to needs, wants, and all that? You have to automate it. The best bet is to be digital and to automate it. Like for instance, I use budgeting apps like Mint, like YNAB, that's how I call it, like YNAB. And of course here in Nigeria, the one I use that totally blows my mind is Piggy Vest. Some people use Calvary Wise and there are so many other ones. See, what those apps will do for you is that immediately your income comes, they take the one you want for a specific thing into where they should be. And they keep safe lucky for you in a way that you will not be tempted to go take them. So assuming you want to save your 20%, for instance, out of your 100,000, and your 100,000 comes on your card, your app will automatically take your 20% and lock it. Yes. It will lock it or you go do it by yourself, right? So that helps you to track your money, especially your spendings. If you also can't, do it the old school way. Map out the money, put the monies in the different accounts, maybe, that you want them to be or in the different, uh, what they call this, um, money savers or whatever that works. <laughs> put them in a way that you know that for this, for need, this is where I should put my hand to take money for my wants, this is where it is. And you must also make sure that you list out what your wants are. Wants are things you want to give yourself to make yourself feel good, right? Needs are things you can't run away from. You must pay your landlord, you must pay your school fees, you must pay, you, you get what I mean? So also make sure that you look at all the things that are under wants, all the things that are under needs, and then keep your savings aside. Another way to do this is to look at your app and set it to save in bits so that your 20 percent you might not want to put it in lump sum but you want you might you can instruct your app to put it for you every day take a particular chunk of money and put it away every week for a number of weeks or days right make sure that your money is still there in your bank for you to take or if better still to prevent temptation let it take it as a lump sum and save for you these apps are so 
trust me, life saving. Now let's talk about the emergency funding. This is the kind of funding that helps you save a life, save your own life. It is your safety net. It is that funding that comes to your rescue. Now, everybody needs to have this kind of funding. And it literally means having at least your expenses for six months. By the time you start tracking your income for the first month, second month, you'll be able to know how much you spend realistically, right? Then you'll be able to know that amount per month times six. Being able to aim your savings to save up to six months that is, stay, that is stored away without you able to touch it until there's an emergency. Emergency funding is so important. See you that is any money, that is a breadwinner, that is working hard. You need a safety net for eventualities, right? That's where emergency funding comes in. By the time you save up your emergency funding and you're saving your 20% separately, I have your wants and need, you will feel even confident to approach certain decisions in your life and you're going to see it materialize every day. And that's why I want it for you. To make sure that you're also reviewing your budgets once in a while because sometimes you earn more you earn less or they increase your salary or you get the major contract make sure that every income that comes to your hand goes into that 50 30 20 formula that way you can make adjustments you can increase your savings and all that also when your money is also tighter like things let's say you lose your job you didn't end for a month or two it will also affect how you're going to spend okay so make sure that you're not rigid so that you can achieve your aim without burden burden doesn't have to be really hard it is just you being in control of your money and not making your money stress you out for no reason and feel like it's a ghost <laughs> you know what i mean so you see that with this method it's easy for you to budget to plan Choose the Easter app that you like to use for budget. I use Piggyverse, like I said. Choose yours and make sure that it works for you. Okay? This is just a call for you to save smarter, for you to be in control of your money. And then when you're aiming to increase your income, you are doing it with a knowing about the capacity of your spending and your lifestyle. Okay? It was this profitable for you? Hit the like button now. If you didn't before, subscribe. And I'm going to bring even more tips that will blow your mind. Okay, we are here to win. And this is Chi Money Gang. Join the gang right now by subscribing, liking this video first. Drop a comment and let me know what you feel. What else do you think I should have added to this idea that works for you? Let me know in the comment section. I'll be replying right away. All right, see you soon.